Hello, this is a quick video to show how to do manual color balancing on a filtered astro image using GIMP. As you can see, I have an image that is currently displayed here that was stacked on a Deep Sky Stacker that shows that there is a massive green uh, tint to this image. This is a result of using a, a light pollution filter on a color camera and that light pollution filter ended up blocking more reds and more blues but allowed more greens to pass through the image which is um, what is causing this green cast to the image so we're going to use gimp here in this case in order to fix this and the first thing we're going to do actually what i since i'm familiar to on how to do this in photoshop i'm going to add a couple windows to the, my view here so i can see some detailed information about the image the first view i'm going to add is called a histogram and from there i'm going to go to windows dockable dialogues and click histogram and what you'll see is when i do that is the histogram for this image will show up here but right now it's only showing a single value what i want to do is show rgb when you see the RGB histogram, um, first of all, just a little real quick, what the histogram represents is the amount of, amount of color data and where it sits within the frame of the black side to the white side of the frame. Uh, this side of this window represents the black side, where, where the black point is of the image, and then this represents where the point, white point of the image is. If I actually adjust this, uh, yeah, it does nothing, so we'll just ignore that part. So, uh, again, this is just for reference so I can see as I'm doing color balancing. My ultimately, what my goal is, is I want these three color peaks to be directly on top of one another and overlapping as much as possible. So, uh, there is also one other view I like to add in order to do a more precise. Uh, color uh, manual color balance and that is called under windows dockable dialog pointer and what this pointer does is it shows the actual individual rgb values uh, right here rgb and these numbers represent how much data is contained in each pixel uh, for each one of those values. Uh, right, right now the image is actually in 32-bit mode. When you, in, in, when I use Deep Sky Stacker to make a stack file, it outputs a 32-bit uh, file. And so it's easier for, for me to read these values. I like to convert the image to a 16-bit integer. Uh, so we'll do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and click Convert on default settings. You can see there's no changes. But now I can see a little bit more just the standard value. Uh, and uh, the closer, again, when the value is closer to zero of the RGB of these values here, then that represents that it's really close to black. The higher the number, the closer it is to white. So uh, now that we have the pointer and then we have the histogram, actually what I'm going to do is going to take the pointer and I'm going to drag it so that it is a separate uh, view that I, so I can see both the histogram and the pointer. And what all I did is I, I clicked on it and I dragged over and what I wanted to, do, wanted to do is create a highlight around the entire box. You can see a white hi highlight. I'm going to click that and now I can see both the pointer information and the histogram side by side. And then I'm just gonna stretch this window a little bit so I can see both information a little bit more. Okay, so and now uh, what we'll do is uh, I, another feature that I am familiar with in Photoshop is something called layers. Uh, I'm going to just create a duplicate layer of the current image. All a layer is is just basically a a, an object that contains all the information about that image uh, or part of the information. In this case, I duplicated the image layer itself, so now I am working with another copy of the image. 
And what this allows me to do is as I'm applying changes to the image, I can quickly turn off and on the view of that image uh, and compare it to the previous iteration to verify that the changes I made I'm, I'm satisfied with. Okay, so now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, what I'm actually going to do now, that now that I'm working with the layer, is I'm gonna go to colors and levels. And uh, what we see here again is a representation of uh, basically the histogram that's over here. I'm going to change this back to RGB because as soon as you open the levels uh, up, it, it defaults the value again. So I just change again, change this to RGB so I can see all three channels. And then I'm going to change the red channel first. And what I'm going to do is basically bring the red channel up to the point where the color information starts uh, actually just before and I'm gonna stop like right there you can see there's a little bit of gap right here there's no information between there um, and that's just basically where the start of the black point is uh, now I'm gonna do this the same thing for green and I'm gonna just again bring it as close as possible and you can see too as I move this it actually adjusts this value here so if I wanted to get really fine with my adjustment and make sure that the green doesn't start any point before the red, I can just click on the button and just wait a couple seconds, you'll see the histogram adjust. And I just wanna go a little more, another couple points down maybe. Uh, just a little bit more. I'll go down to about, you know what, we'll just type in 32. Okay, uh, so, and it might be kind of hard to see. We'll just actually go s stretch this out a little bit more. And actually you can kind of see the red is actually a little bit before, so we'll just uh, actually go ahead and increase this number again. And that'll bring the green back down. And uh, if you want to tell if they're how close they're in balance, what you can do is if, now looking at the pointer information, uh, this information right here, you can see that actually uh, the green is still a little warmer in this part. But we'll come back and adjust that in a moment here, uh, but it just kind of, you can start to see the values uh, adjust here. So now we'll just go to the blue channel, same thing. Bring this up to just before it starts, we'll give it a, a moment. Uh, when all three colors overlap one another there'll be a white region where they perfectly overlap uh, and um, we're gonna just bring this up just a little bit more uh, probably about there and we'll bring it up just a little bit more and I think I went a little too far so we'll just drop down to about that point so now uh, what we're gonna do is there's still a lot of green in the image uh, and in order to adjust this out, what I'm gonna do is actually adjust the midpoint for green um, and I'm gonna push it so it squishes the green down to the same levels that the red and blue are. So I'm just uh, slide, I'm gonna slide it to the right ever so slightly and I'm gonna watch the bar uh, compress down, go a little bit more and you'll start to see the, the casting go away. As I do this, it is pushing down the uh, black point too, so I may need to bring the black point just to the left a little bit so that uh, it lines up again with the red side. And uh, now we're, again, we're gonna need to squish it down a little bit more. So we'll just go like this. We went too far because now there's uh, we're seeing the red the the red and blue overlapping making up uh, the purple. So we'll just come back just a little bit. And green's now extending past again. So we're just gonna go. Oops, wrong way. Down just a little bit. Give it a moment. Uh, we're we're really close. I'd say that's pretty good. The green is still 
got some showing on the bottom side so what i'm going to do and actually again now this is where the pointer information really does come in handy you'll see that the values for the the reds and greens and blues are very close to one another uh, as i come to the center you should see that they uh you might see that okay so the green and eh, they're, they're kind of close to one another we'll see when we do do a stretch so i am going to do a stretch after this point but what we're going to just do is we're just going to leave uh, i think i'm going to just bring the greens green channel just a little bit further to the left again no no because the problem is once i do that then i have to bring the uh uh, we're going to go down just a little bit more. And then we're going to just go ahead and bring this down just a little bit more, too. Uh, okay, we've got to come up a couple points. Um... Another thing that we can do is, uh, no, okay. I could bring the reds, the white point for red down a little bit, but uh, I will do that. Uh, I, I don't need to do it this time here. We're just gonna adjust the green till it looks a little bit more centered again. So, we're going to click OK. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just duplicate this layer again. So now I'm working with this copy. And we're going to do a stretch of the levels. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is just take this middle point and we're going to bring it up. And. Uh, Generally, what I like to see is the the histogram that, that we start to see the peaks up are around this point. So I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit more. Uh, as you can see, the green hint is gone. So uh, we definitely improved the color balance there. Uh, there might be a little bit of a green in center, and we can we could uh, adjust the levels uh, even more at this point if we wanted to. But now what I'm going to just do is just do a curves adjustment real fast, just to actually before that I'm going to going to do one more levels adjustment uh, because I can see the black point has moved significantly away from the start of the color information. So we'll just do this, get it close to the start. And you can now start to see the colors are starting to come out in the object. We're going to do a little bit more of a stretch one more time. Um, and you can start to really see more of the image. Uh, you can see that I didn't take a flat with this. There's a little bit of a spot and there's a blending issue that a little bit that or for whatever reason this side is dark, darker than this side. Um, but what we'll just do is we'll just do now uh, actually before i make this change again I'm just going to duplicate the layer so i can kind of what i can do uh actually we'll do the curves adjustment quick and uh, we'll just go to about here um And I get a little bit more of the pop, the, uh, the image to pop out just a little bit more. And that's just kind of a real fast color balance and uh, and curves adjustment. And if you wanted to see how it progressed, so basically you just come back over here to your layers and uncheck that. That's how it looked before, uh, how it looked before that. Um, of course, how it originally looked, and then I can just pop between the two layers and kind of compare the differences between how how it, how it uh, changed as we made changes with each adjustment. Again, as long as you're keeping each change set of changes in another duplicate layer, which is what I'm just doing is right clicking on the uh, the uh, layer and choosing duplicate layer. 
creates another in, uh, another layer that which I can make the changes to, and then like I said, I can just quickly do a snap back and forth to see if I really like the results of the change. So that's a, a general overview on how you can do a manual color balance. And uh, thank you.